Hey students, your piano teacher Tim here, and today I'm going to share with you the five things that I wish I knew about when I first started learning piano. Let's get to it. The first thing that I knew about, now when you're first learning piano, you want to be learning about the basics of rhythm, you want to be learning about you know, how to read music, but there's one skill that I didn't even know was possible until I got to college, and that is sight reading. The whole goal of sight reading is being able to look at a piece of sheet music and being able to play it from sight. Not perfectly, mind you, but being able to get from the beginning to the end with re relatively few mistakes. You can learn more about sight reading. I'm going to actually provide links to other lessons I've done on all these topics um, in the description below if you want to learn more about how to sight read properly. But the whole goal is to look at a piece of sheet music and be like, okay, I can read the chords here. And just be able to play it through slowly, maybe not even getting in all the finer details. But it's so important to learn how to sight read because the better of a sight reader you are, the faster you will be able to learn new pieces since you'll be able to learn them from sight. Another thing that it really helps with is patience. So when you first start learning piano, you might be a little discouraged at how much patience it requires to get something to sound like it's supposed to. Well, the better of a sight reader you are, the more it's gonna sound like it's supposed to right off the bat. So, you know, if I was doing for Elise and I didn't know sight reading at all, it might take, you know, forever before, you know, it really starts to sound like something. But if I know how to sight read, even though it might not be perfect, might go oh you know that sounds like for release to me and then that just kind of keeps you going um, in terms of you know keeping motivated all right let me get on to the next thing that I wish I knew about when I started okay the second thing is proper finger technique now what do I mean by that well that's basically playing uh, the right note with the right finger that's probably the most basic thing the other thing is the importance of curving your hands the right way curving your fingers, you've probably heard your piano teacher do that, sitting up straight, and uh, there's a lot of benefits that this can give you when you're at the piano. So first of all, if I'm slouched over, I'll do my best to slouch, uh, first of all, my back is gonna get tired about half hour into this, um, and then my back might hurt. So it's good structurally to sit up straight. Um, you'll be able to play for a lot longer. Another thing about sitting up straight is it will allow you to move up and down the keyboard uh, more freely. Whereas if I'm down like this, you can't see it by, well, you can, can actually see it pretty good here. You have what I call uh, dinosaur arms and they are just not very good at stretching. So when you, when you have your shoulders in like this, you're slouched like that. I used to sit like that all day, every day, as many of us do. Uh, you just can't really reach out as far, whereas if you're back like this, you have your shoulder blades not pressed back, like all the way up here, but, you know, sitting up nice and tall, um, you are, you will be able to, let me move that away, you will be able to move up and down the piano a lot more effectively. And then when it comes to actually being able to play the piece, so you can probably see in this piece, so if you have, you know, say finger five there in the first, that first note D, I want to be making sure I'm using finger five there. If you start with any old fingering, it won't be as smooth as if you use the right one. And that just kind of lines up perfectly with where you have to be on the piano. So make sure that you are not only using the right fingers, if they give you the right fingers, make sure that you are writing in the fingering that you are using so you can make adjustments, you can show your teacher what fingering you're using. Because if you don't write it down, you're probably not going to be very consistent. Like you might use finger three on the D one time, you know, and then the next time you might use finger one and finger five. Um, so you're really gonna lack that consistency in your fingering. So make sure that not only do you have the right fingering technique, but you're writing them in as well. Uh, I get a lot of questions about developing um, correct fingering technique. I do have a lesson on that. Again, I'll include a link to all these skills in the description for you. But in general, where you should start learning proper finger technique is scales. Because scales involve 
very simple finger crossings. There's not a lot going on note-wise, so it's easier to focus on the proper fingers. But also, you're going to be seeing scales and arpeggios, which are these, and all those things in your music. And generally, 99% of the time, you want to use the same fingering that you used for the scale or in the piece as you did in your scale or your arpeggio. So start with scales and arpeggios, and that will help you very develop very basic uh, finger techniques in terms of crosses and things like that. All right, on to the next thing I wish I knew about. All right, the next thing I wish I knew about, even maybe even to pass when I went to music school, was starting from the problem areas when you're practicing. It's, it makes sense in the beginning when you're learning a piece to start at the beginning all the time, because where else would you start learning anything from the beginning? But that can hurt you in the long run, because what's going to happen is as you practice a piece, you're going to find problem areas, measures, that give you more trouble than others. Um, also starting from the beginning all the time uh, will make your beginning really, really good. It'll make your middle part less good, and the ending of your piece way less good. So uh, starting from this problem areas will just kind of help clean everything up a bit more evenly. Let me just kind of show you like an example of what I'm talking about. So we have this minuet, and I've played this uh, many times before, but say, okay, so say in this piece is minuet by Bach, second line down, third measure over, where you have this grace note right here. Say I always me mess that measure up no matter what. Well, guess what? Since I've been learning this piece, this is assuming I've been learning the piece, you know, maybe like two weeks or so. When I first sit down to practice, where should I start? The problem area, of course. And not from the beginning. <laughs> Whoops, I already messed it up. So I'd play this. And I'd play it over and over again until I can play it perfectly. And then what you want to do is you want to add the measure before it and the measure after it and then being able to play from that measure through to add it in uh, to what I call into con well not I didn't make this up but putting it into context with the rest of the piece so I'd play the measure before it because you'd be surprised like if you work on a problem area and you don't put it into context with the rest of the piece it will be it, you actually will really, really struggle with it because you'll get into that measure before and then you'll be like, wait a second, I didn't really practice like coming into the measure or leaving the measure. So you really want to make sure that you're doing that. So starting from your problem areas is something I really wish I knew about. If you want to learn more about starting from your problem areas, of course, I have a lesson for you in the description that you can learn a lot more about it. So let's get on to the next thing. All right, one thing I really wish I knew about and I wish other students knew about, especially if you're starting out, and this one's really short, it's really simple, is how much patience it takes to learn piano. For most people, it is not something you're going to pick up in a day, in a week, in a month. I mean, you can start making progress at piano right away. Like, you might be able to play Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star within a day or something very, very simple. But if you're really shooting for something like Moonlight Sonata or something, I know I'm going to get some comments about this of people. Oh, I learned it the first day. First of all, you didn't learn it well the first day. Stop saying that. But anyway, uh, if you're trying to learn something more complicated, it's going to take time for you to get there. And it might often, at least for me, whenever I'm trying to do something complicated, it takes probably a little bit more time to a lot more time, you know, of what you originally anticipated. So just keep in mind, It's just keep this in your mental box that it takes time uh, it's not something that's going to happen in a day frustration and disappointment are part of the process and the whole thing to succeeding at playing piano in the long run is being able to get over that feeling of disappointment maybe you're like oh man I'm, I'm three weeks in and i still can't play for a lease um, don't worry about it uh, just keep work chipping away and you'll get there don't compare yourself to other people Please don't. I, I even struggle with that. Just don't do that. Just compare yourself to yourself and you'll make progress and that's really all that matters. All right, let me get on to the fifth thing that I wish I knew about. Okay, the last thing I wish I knew about right from the beginning is how um, scales, keys, 
chords and all that stuff fits together um, because really understanding it, it all boils down to what we call music theory. Um, understanding music theory is so important when learning how to play piano because in a piece, um, actually let's take the piece I used as an example a minute ago. So say this minuet here, um, because I know all of this stuff, again, I'm going to include a link in the description that will explain all this better than I will right now. Um, but, you know, just glancing here at this first measure, I see that there's, you know, a G major chord. So, boom. And because I've been learning all my chords, I don't have to read each note individually, which would take forever. I just know, boom, G major. I also know that this is in the key signature of G major as well which you would expect a G major chord in the beginning there. And I just know the theory behind that. So learning theory is very important. Um, I also know that, you know, we're going to be having, because it's in G major, we have one sharp, F sharp throughout the whole piece. So every F in the whole piece, unless it tells you otherwise with a natural, is going to be sharp. I didn't really, and, it, and this takes a lot of time to really um, understand really well also. Um, but the sooner you can start learning music theory, the better. It's probably not one of the very first skills you want to learn. Again, you want to learn about rhythm. You want to learn where the notes are on the piano, how to read music. I would start probably with those three. And then music theory is probably like something you want to start on as soon as possible. Um, and also knowing like the scales and knowing your keys and everything, looking at this example again, because it's in the key of G major, I know what chords I'm going to be commonly finding. I know which pattern of notes I can generally expect. There are always things that can buck the trend, but it just gives my brain so much more information to go on. And I really wish I had maybe started on music theory and all this stuff a little bit before. All right, so those were the five things I wish I knew about. If there's something you would like to add, please, please, please let me know in the comments. Once again, if you want to learn more about each of these things I talked about today, links are for you in the description. Make sure you check out some of the other lessons around the channel because I have quite a catalog. And um, yeah, so it's been your piano teacher, Tim here. Thank you so much for coming by today and I'll see you, yes you, in the next lesson.